Okay, everyone, so let's take a look at your answers here. So for nitrogen, you should have seven protons, we have seven electrons, and then for neutrons, actually it's 14 minus seven, which is seven. So you should have a circle with your protons and neutrons written inside. And then we have seven electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this has, actually we haven't talked about valence electrons. Let's go back for a second actually. So sulfur had one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just going to use valence electrons as like a symbol there. So remember, valence electrons is the amount of electrons on the outside orbit. Lithium has only one, one valence electron. So you want to get in the habit of recognizing that. So nitrogen has one, two, three, four, five valence electrons. Okay, calcium. So calcium, you have 20 protons, we have 20 electrons then, and then we have 40 minus 20, which is 20 neutrons. Okay, so let's do this. So we have a nucleus, protons, 20, neutrons, 20, and now we have 20 electrons to add in. So we have one, two, then we have another one that's going to be full. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we need to keep going because that's only 10. So we're going to draw another one. So this one is also going to be full. That's going to get us to 18. And then we're still not done. Okay, so now we need two more. So that means we're still going to add another valence. Uh, so this is actually our valence electron, but we need another orbit with two to get us a total of 20. So remember the valence electrons is your outside shell. So this has two, two valence electrons. But we need it, so you just keep adding more and more orbits depending on what you need in order to get to the electron count properly. Okay, so those are Bohr Rutherford uh, diagrams. So the next thing I'm going to show you, this is actually an advanced placement, uh, like an AP extension. So normally you wouldn't learn this until grade 10, um, but we're obviously going to teach that to you now because we want to, you know, this is part of the enrichment program, but also, um, it actually makes drawing atoms way easier. Once you learn how to do a Lewis dot diagram, it's like the best compared to Bohr Rutherford. Okay, so Lewis dot diagram is another way to represent atoms. So obviously, if I ever ask you to draw me elements or draw me atoms, I will be specific. Do I want a Bohr Rutherford or do I want a Lewis? Okay. So instead of, so it's kind of like a little mini shortcut to drawing atoms. So instead of drawing the nucleus and all of the different energy levels, what we do is we write the symbol of the element, and the symbol of the element is representing the nucleus and all of the inner electrons. And all we're going to do is we add dots to represent the valence electrons only. Okay, so I'm going to show you what I mean by that. We're actually going to use the examples that we did together to do the opposite. So we have carbon. So let me, let me make this bigger, actually. I think I can do that. Maybe I can't. Hold on. Okay. So carbon, we're going to do all the ones we drew Bohr Rutherford's for. We're going to draw Lewis dots, Lewis diagrams for them. Sometimes it's called a Lewis dot diagram or um, an electron dot diagram, um, but Lewis diagrams and Lewis dot and electron dot, those are all the same. So here we have four valence electrons. So let's go back to our sheet here. Okay, so we're going to do carbon. So remember, we're not drawing all of the different, um, we're not drawing the nucleus and all of the electron levels. We're just going to draw the symbol for carbon. And we're going to draw the four valence electrons. Now, the same order placement that you would do on an energy level, like on the circle, you do the same um, order 
on your around your symbol basically so it's almost like there's an imaginary shell there and you are drawing your electron so carbon has four so we make sure that there's one on either side and that's it so you're just drawing the valence electrons let's do our other ones we did together so we have sulfur and we have lithium sulfur has six valence electrons lithium has one valence electron so let's do this so sulfur has six valence electrons. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. And there's sulfur. Lithium had only one valence electron. So we write the symbol for lithium and we draw one dot. So the key is you need to understand what does valence electron mean. And these are, that's, that's it. So here I'd like you to do, maybe I'm going to do it right beside it here, but Try the electron uh, dot diagram or the Lewis dot for nitrogen and then for calcium. Okay, so I'll use a different color here. So nitrogen, there's five valence electrons. So we're going to follow the same pattern. One, two, three, four, five. There you go. Calcium. Calcium has two valence electrons. Calcium, one, two, done. Aren't you happy you learned that? <laughs> so now keep in mind, you're still responsible for knowing how to do both. Okay, so Bohr Rutherford is obviously a longer process, but it's more detailed. It shows the protons, neutrons, and all the electrons. Lewis diagrams are great as well, but it's not as detailed. It's kind of like a little mini shortcut to drawing atoms. But the reason why we're learning this now is because Lewis dot diagrams are very useful when we start talking about more complex structures that atoms can make. And it'll make more sense later on. Okay, so that's it. So we have a Bohr-Rutherford and Lewis dot. We have two different ways of representing atoms.